Hello and welcome to our special show, Save a Life. I'm Priyanshi Sharma. Life is valuable and precious. Being able to revive a person's heart to save their life will provide one with immense satisfaction. It's a sad but a true fact that the number of people dying from cardiovascular diseases is steadily rising in India. Most of these cardiac arrests are sudden and on the spot. It is possible to prevent these disease, uh, uh, these cardiac deaths if they receive immediate medical attention and CPR. The recent incidences of some celebrities collapsing suddenly and passing away due to a heart attack are concerning and shocking. There is an alarming rise in the number of young patients with heart attacks and sudden cardiac arrest as well. Now what is equally scary is that sudden cardiac death may happen in people who have no known history of heart disease. The risk is higher for patients with existing heart diseases. In almost every family, we have at least one family member with a heart disease. Now, can one make himself or herself capable enough to save a life in emergency situations? The answer is yes. It is possible if you are well trained in CPR. Many adults in cardiac arrest can be revived with intact neurologic function if the bystanders provide immediate CPR. Raising public awareness and understanding of the practical applications of CPR is an essential strategy to increase the success rate of CPR in cardiac arrest cases. Save a Life is an initiative through which people will be made aware of the early signs and symptoms of cardiac arrest, train them on CPR and highlight the role of CPR in saving a life. Today, we have with us joining eminent cardiologists. Let me take a moment to welcome them. Dr. Aftab Khan, the senior consultant interventional cardiologist and in charge of electrophysiology services at Apollo Hospitals in Kolkata. We also have Dr. Deepa Krishnamurti, who is a senior interventional cardiologist at Sakra World Hospital in Bengaluru. We also have Dr. P. Rajendra Kumar, a consultant interventional cardiologist and director at KIMS Hospital in Hyderabad. Thanks very much, doctors, for joining us. Dr. Khan, my my first question to you, cardiovascular diseases are the leading cause of death worldwide and they are also one of the most expensive diseases. Which cardiovascular diseases are preventable and which are not? No, that's a wonderful question. I think you've already given a brief preview of what, uh, what we are facing in our uh, in our day-to-day -day scenario. And India is basically is going to be heading towards a, a tsunami of cardiac disease unless we take action proactively now. Uh, there are certain diseases uh, which are unfortunately not preventable, but cardiovascular disease is fortunate for us. 80% of those cases uh, which we now see in a clinical practice can be prevented if we find out the, the primary cause and we take preventive actions before these uh, disaster strikes us. So there are four main causes of, uh, of heart disease which are preventable or modifiable. And of these, we have hypertension or high blood pressure. We have diabetes or high blood sugar. We have high cholesterol, also known as dyslipidemia, and we have tobacco consumption, whether it's in chewed form or smoked form, all of this which can end up causing a heart disease. So if we take care of these four major causes, we know that we can prevent as many as 80% of heart disease in many of our healthy young people. And the basic important reason for doing all this is also to understand that if we don't do know the figures, unfortunately, not many of us go for health checkups. So one needs to go for a regular health checkup uh, and this is usually after the age of 40 years, which should be annually. And if you have one of the other risk factors that I talked about, then probably even after the age of 30 years, one should go for a regular health checkup. And of course, maintain a healthy diet uh, and of course, get some form of physical activity on a regular basis. We now know that as many as 6,000 steps per day, well, that's your target for you to prevent you from having a heart disease. Right. And my second question to you, Dr. Krishnamurthy. Now, it is a well-known fact that heart diseases don't just happen to older adults. Which heart problems are more common in young adults? Yeah. Uh, in India, we see a bimodal distribution of uh, heart attacks. We see heart attacks happening in those who are above the age of 60, which is a common phenomenon worldwide. But in India, we also have people who get heart attacks below the age of 40. So there is a peak below the age of 40 and one peak above the age of 60. Below the age of 40, the commonest uh, acute uh, cardiac condition is a heart attack and it is life threatening. If immediate treatment is not provided within the first one or two hours, the chances of losing life, the chances of permanent damage to the heart and long term complications are high. Apart from heart attack, 
high blood pressure is another common problem we see among young adults below the age of 40 even below the age of 30 of course uh, people who have been born with um, congenital heart disease or birth defects in the heart do present in younger age groups and we also see certain inherited or genetic conditions of the heart called cardiomyopathies and channelopathies presenting at younger age groups uh, we also see complications of uh, smoking and tobacco use on the heart which is primarily a heart attack among uh, young adults uh, so these are the common heart problems we see among young people just because somebody is below the age of 40 below the age of 30 does not mean that they cannot have heart disease especially when it comes to heart attack no age is exempt and anybody having suspicious symptoms should see a doctor and reach hospital as early as possible so that lives can be saved right uh, and of course uh, uh, that is an important point to note for all of us and dr jain uh, while we also talk about sleep apnea it's a, a potentially serious sleep disorder now is there any link between sleep apnea and heart diseases and how can someone prevent heart disease if he or she is suffering from sleep apnea yeah sleep apnea and heart disease there is definitely a link between sleep apnea and heart disease so sleep apnea actually what happens uh, the windpipe which is there the trachea it gets obstructed due to the excessive fat in the neck and because of the short necks there's a compression and because once the compression of the trachea occurs in the night there is a decrease in the oxygen level in the body and which causes increase in the carbon dioxide in the body and because of this it causes a cascade of changes which leads to hypertension and which leads to stroke and diabetes so how to prevent all the complications of sleep apnea? First of all, you should be able to diagnose sleep apnea. So the simple thing is anybody is snoring, excessive snoring in the night. So you have to suspect sleep apnea, excessive uh, snoring in the night and daytime sleepiness. Somebody is talking to us and just uh, snores off, dozes off. Then you have to suspect sleep apnea in this condition. So there's a simple study, the simple test called sleep study to diagnose sleep apnea. And once it's diagnosed, the patient has to be corrected for sleep apnea. There are four, uh, four important uh, uh, techniques how to correct the sleep apnea so that a heart disease can be prevented, a heart failure can be prevented, and a stroke can be prevented. The first one is, once your diagnosis is sleep apnea, use a CPAP machine regularly in the night, at least for eight hours in the night. And this causes increased oxidation and decreased carbon dioxide and reduction of blood pressure and reduction of heart failure and stroke. Second is management of risk factors in these patients like high blood pressure. The commonest cause of high blood pressure is a sleep apnea. A lot of people don't realize that. So once they're obese, the sleep apnea causes uncontrolled resistant hypertension. So once you correct sleep apnea, the hypertension can be corrected. In fact, the commonest cause of severe pulmonary hypertension is also sleep apnea. Once you correct sleep apnea, the hypertension got corrected, the severe PA is corrected, the heart failure is got corrected. And these people have to follow a regular healthy lifestyle, reduction of the um, uh, control of diabetes, control of blood pressure and if the people are uh, smokers, they have to stop smoking and they have to maintain a very healthy way so the sleep apnea gets corrected. That advice, of course, uh, important for all of us to follow. And Dr. Khan, my next question to you, the higher your blood pressure levels are, the more risk you have for other health problems. So how is blood pressure related to heart disease? So I think as all our uh, previous, uh, my colleagues have also mentioned about the fact that hypertension is the number one killer. And the unfortunate thing about hypertension is that it may not produce mass symptoms unless the patient ends up with one of the diseases which affect either the brain, heart or the kidneys. So these are the three main vital organs. And uh, this works is often known as a, a silent killer. Silent because it may not produce mass symptoms before you end up with a problem. And it's a killer because it can cause uh, diseases which can, uh, which have fatal outcomes. So it's important for us to all get our blood pressure checked at least uh, once or twice in a year. And uh, the problem with hypertension is that, as we said, it can cause fatal diseases. And of these fatal diseases, the first one is hypertension causing a weakening of the heart muscle. So once there is hypertension, it causes the heart pumping to go down, something that is known as a cardiomyopathy. And this can produce uh, a fatal disease and patients often die of heart failure. The second more important cause of uh, fatality in a patient with hypertension is, of course, heart attacks. And as I said, it's one of those dangerous four uh, besides diabetes, blood pressure and uh, cholesterol levels, uh, which would end up causing a heart attack. And there's another lethal disease, which is known as an aortic dissection or an aortic aneurysm. And aorta is one of the main arteries which supplies blood from the heart to the rest of the body. And there's often a bulge or a tear in this main artery 
And this can be lethal often presenting uh, in the emergency and we may not be able to salvage many of these patients. So it's important that we realize that hypertension is just, just a figure. It's not something that is uh, easy to, to sort of neglect. And if you're moving around with a blood pressure which is more than 150 or a diastolic which is more than 100, please do not take it uh, lightly. Even though it may not produce much symptoms, it may also end up with something more lethal. And besides causing lethal diseases, it can also affect your quality of life. So patients who have uncontrolled hypertension often are fatigued. They have shortness of breath. They get abnormal palpitations, which are also known as arrhythmias. And many of these arrhythmias can also be something that can affect quality of life. Uh, so not only does it cause lethal diseases, which are life-threatening, but it can also affect your quality of, of life if it's not well controlled. Right. And uh, Dr. Krishnamurti, are symptoms of heart attack or cardiac arrest different for men and women? That is a very important question. Yes, uh, heart attack symptoms can be different among men and women. While men typically tend to present with uh, retrosternal or chest pain, which happens in the center of the chest, uh, uh, pain which radiates to the jaw, pain which radiates to the arm, uh, <clears throat> and sweating, typically uh, women uh, tend to present with atypical symptoms more commonly. Uh, this, unfortunately, leads to delays in obtaining appropriate uh, treatment for the heart attack not only in India world over this is an observed phenomenon because of social issues uh, women tend to seek care a little later than men and the symptoms also tend to be atypical women when they get a heart attack are more likely to ex uh, experience uh, atypical kind of chest discomfort or heaviness uh, isolated jaw pain uh, sometimes uh, only arm pain or back pain uh, commonly they may present with symptoms of indigestion or gastritis or heartburn uh, they may present only with tiredness giddiness or sweating and the typical crushing central chest pain which happens among men uh, is less likely to happen among women uh, the exact reasons are not known but this is an observed phenomenon and whenever whenever women present with these atypical symptoms the doctors attending to them in the emergency need to be aware and they need to be proactively evaluating for uh, uh, to rule out a heart attack by doing ECGs, by doing blood tests, by doing cardiac imaging like echocardiogram uh, and in suspected cases uh, if still uh, things are not clear take them for an early angiogram uh, to detect blockages and to treat them effectively. Uh, as I told earlier this is an observed phenomenon world over that atypical symptoms are more common among women which leads to delays in doing an angiogram, delays in angioplasty, delays in even giving initial uh, blood thinner medication or antiplatelet drugs as, as we call them. Uh, so this is an observed thing wide over, uh, world over and we need to be aware of it and uh, take more proactive measures to rule out a heart attack among women when they present to the emergency. Like the famous book goes, men are from Mars, women are from Venus. Even in a heart attack, uh, there is a difference in the way women present. So we need to be uh, sure that we are not missing a heart attack when they come with these symptoms. Right. And uh, while we're talking of symptoms, Dr. Jain, how can a person differentiate the pain of angina from a heart attack? Yeah, that's a very important thing. Many of the people are getting misled and most of the heart attacks are missed. Angina and heart attack both can lead to a serious condition, can heart attack and patient can collapse. So angina pain is more, most of the people get, is a, uh, people think there's a chest pain. It's not the chest pain. Any discomfort in the chest, let it be squeezing pain, burning pain, heaviness in the chest, which occurs on exertion and relieved by rest or a sublingual sorbitate. This is a classic angina description. So anybody gets any chest heaviness on exertion, discomfort, burning pain, heaviness on the chest or as if somebody is kept a heavy thing on the heart. These are the classical angina signs. And if you have seen sign and a burning pain, so most of the problem with the uh, people, they think it's a burning pain and they neglect the gas. And when they come to the hospital, to the doctor, and they tell it's a, it's a gas pain. So when we inquire more, they say, yes, I'm getting a burning pain, which comes on exertion. And when I stop, I am a burning pain comes down. And this is a classical angina pain. The heart attack pain also is a similar pain, but the duration is longer here. 
and this can lead to more catastrophe like a major heart attack so the duration is longer when the characteristics are same and this is a heart attack pain and you should not neglect and you have to suppose to go to hospital next 60 to 90 minutes and that's a golden time and if you don't go in this 60 to 90 minutes your heart muscle which can be salvaged by a thrombolytic therapy or by in a primary angioplasty the heart muscle gets damaged and you leave with a severe scar in the left ventricle and you leave with a severe left ventricular dysfunction and which can future can lead to heart failure so never ignore these symptoms which causes which comes on exhaustion and relieve the breast and this is an angina pain and this occurs as a warning before a heart attack most of the heart attacks there's enough warning the pain Right, of course, that difference very important to note there, Dr. Jain. But for now, we'll take a short break, but we'll be back with this important discussion on the other side. Stay tuned. Welcome back to our special discussion in which we're focusing on heart attacks and means of revival. We have eminent cardiologists with us. And Dr. Khan, my question to you. During cardiac arrest, what happens to a person? What is cardiac arrest truly? Really? Yeah, uh, so uh, Pianchi, the problem with uh, us all uh, as a lay person is that there's often a confusion between a heart attack and a cardiac arrest. And we, are, we need to understand that these are two different things. A heart attack is when the pipelines of the, art, of the heart, which are also known as coronary arteries, get clogged. And this is often because of hypertension, diabetes, blood pressure, or cigarette smoking. And the arteries are completely blocked off and the blood circulation to the heart is stopped. And that's the time when the patient gets a complaints, uh, as was discussed with my colleague, of chest heaviness, and they may be sweating. And this is a time when the patient will complain of symptoms. He would say that, take me to a hospital, and your job that time should be to either, if you have aspirin at home, to give him aspirin and get him at the earliest to the hospital. So here the patient will complain of something and uh, gives you adequate time for you to react. A sudden cardiac arrest is different from a cardiac from a heart attack in that the, the cardiac arrest is related to not the pipelines, but they are related to the electrical circuits of the heart. A heart normally beats at around 60 to 80 beats per minute. And its job is to primarily pump blood to the rest of the body. In cardiac arrest, the heart starts pumping very slowly uh, in terms of its force and very rapidly where the heartbeats can go almost up to 200 to 250 beats per minute. And then the heart suddenly stops. And this is a time when the vital organs of the body and especially the brain does not get blood. So when you have a cardiac arrest and the heart stops and if the brain does not get blood for more than three minutes, you realize that this patient is going to go into coma. And if you cannot restart the heart within a period of 10 minutes, this person is going to die. So unlike a patient with a heart attack who will give you some time, a person with a cardiac arrest has probably no symptoms prior and therefore it is known as a sudden cardiac arrest. So in a sudden cardiac arrest, the symptoms would be almost non-existent and the person will just fall down unconscious in front of you, whether this is on the roads, whether it's in a sports in a sports area, whether it's it's in the in the mall or anywhere, even at home. So your job at that period of time is to make sure that you get the heart started within a period of three minutes, if possible, because the longer you delay and you take this time, wait for this patient to be reaching the hospital uh, within a period of ten minutes, this patient is going to be dead, and the reaction has to be from the bystander. And as we discussed earlier, it is the lay person who has to give the therapy at that period of time. So the treatment here is to make sure that we start the heart by means of a massage, which is known as a cardiac massage. And we also try and get a defibrillator or an electrical shocking machine, which can give a deliver a shock to the heart and get the heart started. Right. So how do we recognize cardiac arrest? Well, the person is going to be unconscious in front of you. So you're supposed to tap the shoulder of the person and try and wake him up to see whether he's responsive. And we also check for a breathing. So you put your hand on top of the upper part of the abdomen and see the movement of the abdomen. If the chest moves or if the abdomen is moving and the person is breathing, well, he's not in a cardiac arrest. But if the person is unconscious and there is no movement of the chest, then this is a diagnosis of a cardiac arrest where the bystander must immediately start a cardiac massage and try and call for medical help and continue the massage 
till the time medical help arrives right. and if one get an automated external defibrillator also known as an aed one must try and get the defibrillator to shock the person out of his cardiac arrest right and as we talk about treatment and ways of revival dr jain what are the things you should do uh, before you begin giving somebody a cpr uh, you are asking this question to me no yes yeah so the most important thing in a cpr is, is the initially cpr is cardiopulmonary resuscitation there are two components one is a cardiac massage second is a mouth to mouth breathing the problem with the mouth to mouth breathing most of the people are not willing to do it so whenever a cpr has to be done call 108 number ask for help that's very very important second push hard and fast in the center of the chest at the same tempo as any of the movie song like jingle or any of the songs very fast beat so you have to do at least 120 compressions per minute so remember the movie song and how fast the movie tempo is there and compress the chest this way you can save the lives of the patient and this is not enough so you should have a proper training also but today morning only ndtv and uma shri sudhir has shown that a person a police comp 24 year old post police constable he was gym doing a gym workout and he collapsed in the gym and there was no person who knew knew a cpr so everybody should know a cpr and a simple things again i'll revise two things call for 108 ask for help in the meantime the help comes what you do push hard and fast in the center of the chest of the patient at least it should be 120 times a minute so remember a song which is a fast beat song and remember the steps of the song and you do fa fa fast compression of the cpr the chances of recovery will be high as my earlier speaker has told that you can if you have an aed if you have defibrillator in a place in a gym give a shock to the patient the patient might survive Right well uh, doctors thanks very much for joining us and answering those very important questions with that it's a wrap on this show we hope it helped you learn more about heart diseases and means of revival thanks for watching goodbye